A buck converter is a type of circuit that steps down DC voltage, taking a higher voltage and turning it into a lower one. For example, you might step 12 volts from a car battery down to 3 volts to safely power an LED. Now, you might be wondering, why not just use a simple voltage divider? Fair question. It's extremely simple. Add one resistor and you're done. But here's the catch. In a voltage divider, current is always flowing through both resistors, no matter how much power your load actually needs. Even if the load is barely drawing any current at all, those resistors are still burning energy. And that wasted current turns into heat, which means wasted power. A buck converter, on the other hand, can theoretically reach 100% efficiency. In real life, it's a bit lower, but still far better than a resistor divider. That's why buck converters are the go-to choice in battery-powered devices, where every bit of energy counts. So how does it actually work? Don't worry, it's not as complicated as it sounds. Imagine a simple circuit with a switch, a DC power source, and a light bulb as the load. Flip the switch on, and the light turns on. Flip it off, and the light turns off. Simple. Now, if we looked at the voltage and current in that circuit, we'd see square waves. High when the switch is on, and zero when it's off. The light bulb would literally be blinking on and off in time with the switch. Now let's pay closer attention to the switch itself. The switch stays on for a certain amount of time, then off for a certain amount of time. One complete on-off cycle is called the switching period, and the fraction of that period when the switch is on is called the duty cycle. The duty cycle is always greater than zero and less than one. If the switch is on half the time, that's a duty cycle of 0.5. If it's on only a quarter of the time, that's 0.25. And keep in mind that we can also describe both the on time and the off time entirely in terms of the duty cycle. Now, let's take a closer look at the output voltage. As we said earlier, the output is a square wave, which means we can talk about its average value. Since the on time divided by the total period, T on over T, is exactly the duty cycle, we can find the average output voltage simply by multiplying the input voltage by that duty cycle. And because the duty cycle is always less than 1, the output voltage is always lower than the input voltage. That's the foundation of a buck converter. By adjusting the duty cycle, we can dial the average output voltage down to whatever lower level we need. And because we're not wasting power in resistors, all of the energy from the source goes into the load. In theory, that gives us 100% efficiency with no conversion loss at all. But there's a catch. Even though the average voltage is lower, the actual output is still a square wave, not smooth DC. And if you feed that into a circuit that expects clean power, things can get unpredictable. To smooth out that square wave, we bring in two key components, a capacitor and an inductor. If you're not familiar with how those work, check out our earlier videos. There's a link in the description. Let's start by seeing what happens when we connect a capacitor in parallel with the load. When the switch is on, the capacitor charges up quickly because it's connected almost directly to the battery, with very little resistance in the way. When the switch turns off, the capacitor begins to discharge through the load, releasing its stored energy more slowly. That slow release helps keep current flowing for a short time, thanks to the load's resistance. If we keep switching the circuit on and off, the voltage across the capacitor no longer looks like a sharp square wave. Instead, the corners get softened and the waveform becomes smoother. That helps, but it's not enough. You still get fairly large voltage swings. So now, let's see what happens when we connect an inductor in series with the load. Along with that inductor, we add a diode right here. Don't worry, you'll see why that diode is essential in just a moment. When the switch turns on, the inductor doesn't allow the current to jump up instantly. It resists that sudden change, so at first the current is small and the voltage across the load is close to zero. During this time, the diode is reverse biased, so no current flows through it. 
As time passes, the inductor stores energy and allows the current to rise. With more current flowing, the voltage across the load gradually increases. But now, imagine the switch turns off. The inductor doesn't want the current to drop suddenly either. To keep the current flowing, it generates whatever voltage is needed, releasing the energy it stored moments earlier. That voltage forward biases the diode, and the current now loops through the diode and the load. So even though the switch is open, the load still receives current. If we keep switching like this, the voltage across the load becomes smoother. Instead of a sharp square wave, it starts to look more like a triangular shape. The inductor definitely helps, but on its own, it's still not enough. There's still noticeable ripple left. Now that you've seen how a capacitor and an inductor each smooth the square wave a little on their own, here's the real question. What happens if we combine them like this? When the switch turns on, both the inductor and the capacitor begin storing energy, and current flows through the load. Then, when the switch turns off, both components release that stored energy, helping keep the current steady and preventing the voltage from dropping too quickly. With the two working together, the voltage across the load now looks almost like pure DC, with only a tiny ripple left. And that's the magic of a buck converter. It rapidly switches energy on and off, then shapes it with an inductor and a capacitor to give us exactly the voltage we want, with almost no wasted power. Take a look at this circuit and focus on the input voltage and the output voltage. As we discussed earlier, the load is constantly pulling energy from the capacitor, while the inductor is constantly feeding energy back into it as the switch turns on and off. When those two energy flows balance each other out, the converter reaches what we call steady state. In steady state, the output voltage barely changes during a single switching cycle. That lets us treat it as essentially constant while we analyze the waveforms. Now, with the input voltage and the output voltage treated as constant, let's look at what happens across the inductor during the on time and the off time. First, the switch on case. When the switch is closed, the voltage across the inductor is V in minus V out. And since both V in and V out are constant, that means the inductor sees a constant positive voltage. From the inductor's voltage current rule, a constant voltage across an inductor causes the current to change at a steady, linear rate. So during this time, the inductor current ramps upward in a straight line. Now let's look at the switch off case. When the switch is open, the current path runs through the diode. If we ignore the small voltage drop across the diode, the voltage across the inductor becomes minus V out. This is a constant negative voltage. The inductor is trying to keep the current flowing in the same direction, so it generates a voltage opposite to the original polarity. If that feels a bit unintuitive, I highly recommend checking out our inductor video. There's a link in the description. Once again, because the voltage across the inductor is constant, the current changes linearly. This time, it ramps downward, so the inductor current falls in a straight line. Putting it all together, during switching, the voltage across the inductor looks like a simple square wave, V in minus V out when the switch is on, and minus V out when the switch is off. That square wave voltage across the inductor produces a triangular current waveform through it. Here's the crucial steady state condition. The inductor must start and end each switching cycle with the same current. If it doesn't, if the current at the end of the cycle is different from the current at the beginning, that mismatch builds up over many cycles. The average inductor current slowly drifts up or down, and the output voltage drifts with it instead of settling to a stable value. That's why this condition is absolutely essential. If we zoom in on just one switching cycle, here's what steady state really means. Over one full switching period, the total change in inductor current, delta I, has to be zero. In other words, the inductor current might ramp up and then ramp back down, but it must end the cycle exactly where it started. And if the net change in current is zero, then the average voltage across the inductor over that same cycle must also be zero. Don't just memorize that, follow the logic. 
No net change in current means no net push from the inductor, so the average voltage across L has to cancel out. That means the positive inductor voltage during the on time and the negative inductor voltage during the off time must balance each other perfectly. Now we plug in T on and T off using the duty cycle expressions we already defined. After simplifying, we get the classic buck converter result, V out over V in equals D. And remember, the duty cycle D is always between 0 and 1, so as long as the inductor and capacitor are large enough that the output voltage barely changes within a switching cycle, the duty cycle directly sets the step-down ratio in the ideal case. Of course, real hardware isn't perfectly ideal. Component resistance, switching losses, diode drops, and current limits all reduce the efficiency a bit and can shift the exact output voltage you get. But the core relationship, V out over V in equals D, still captures the fundamental behavior of the buck converter. And that brings us to the end of this buck converter video. If you think these videos are valuable and help make the world a little more understandable, I'd love your support over on Patreon. Joining the community really helps keep this channel going. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more clear, hands-on science and electronics videos.